Hi folks, uh, back again. Um, we're going to go into the final section of this presentation. Um, and again, you're not going to be quizzed or examined on this particular information. Um, but this is the third section, um, the third heritage, the third history um, um, in Africa, which is the European influence, the European colonization of the continent. And it, to be honest, um, it European uh, influence in the continent was very very disruptive, primarily compared to uh, the Islamic uh, influence. Um, and that's primarily because um, it happened so quickly. As I've said, um, Europeans first began making contact in the, to, to the African continent around 1600. The Portuguese were one of the first um, people to explore the continent. Um, and But in the 1800s, that, uh, that influence and uh, ex accelerated to, to a great degree. Um, and had a very disruptive effect that lasts to this very day. Uh, and that's one of the, that's the primary focus for the rest of the semester is this particular portion of African history. How um, the certain problems that we identify with the continent are not necessarily indigenous to that continent, uh, to the African people, but we tend to think in terms of, you know, that poverty and illness and other uh, problems uh, that Africans face are uh, problems that go way back into history. Um, but a lot of that is actually a result of what happened in the 18th and 19th, uh, the 19th and 20th century um, with European colonization. Um, so like the Arabs, they had uh, an influence on various aspects of, 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 the, of African life. Uh, first of all, they introduced Christianity and Christian education. Um, which had um, a, a, an obvious influence on, on the continent. Um, and so you'll see a lot of um, Africans, particularly uh, sub-Saharan Africans, who, um, who adopted um, uh, the Christian, uh, Christian religion and Christian education. Uh, they also influenced uh, language of Africa, uh, depending on who colonized what particular region. For example, Kenya, um, where I used to live, um, luckily, they spoke English. Um, a, a majority of the population spoke English because they were colonized by the British. And so um, that was one of their languages. Uh, but they also spoke Swahili in Kenya. And, um, and in many cases, they spoke their indigenous tribal languages like Kikuyu or uh, 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 Maasai. Um, but in Senegal, um, which was colonized by the French. They spoke Fran French, was, um, and so it depended on it depends on what part of the continent you go to, what country you go to. Uh, it's going to depend uh, who on who colonized that particular region. Um, they obviously influenced the architecture, uh, which we'll see in a second. Uh, they introduced the commercial slave trade, which I won't go into, um, but it was much more violent than the uh, the Arabic slave trade. Uh, but again, Dr. Ma Ali Mazrui will go into depth um, about that uh, in his documentary, The Tools of Exploitation. Um, they also influenced African culture, the music, the clothing, uh, the food, uh, their cuisine. But they introduced one other thing that is um, that of all the, the aspects of European influence is probably is the reason it was most disruptive was because of the resource exploitation and extraction, um, which we'll focus on later. Um, in 1864, a lot of these European countries like uh, France, uh, England, uh, Belgium, Portugal, Italy, they got together at this Berlin co uh, conference uh, in 1864 to decide essentially the fate of Africa. They all had um, an abiding interest in and in, in through export, uh, explore, exploration of the continent. Um, each of these countries had a, had an interest um, in it, but they it got to such a fever pitch um, that they were calling it the scramble for Africa. Um, and so they decided that they were going to settle this these these particular uh, issues once and for all. Um, and they got together and decided essentially what the country would look like. And this is what you see here, these borders that you see that, that make up various countries in, in, in the African continent were borders created by Europeans. And I, and I think it's important to note here 
that at this Berlin conference, there was not a single African uh, to represent the continent. So all the decisions that they made um, were made um, at the exclusion of, of, of any African voices. Uh, and why is this important? Well, just take Kenya, for example, um, which was a British colony. And um, the British um, carved out these borders that you see here um, for Kenya and decided that that was going to be a new country called Kenya. Um, here in this pink, this is Maasai territory. I've shown you photographs of them, uh, of, a photograph of Maasai women um, who still live their traditional lifestyle. But this border here that you see, where's my arrow? There it is. Uh, this border here, that's not where Maasai territory ended. Um, they spilled over into Tanzania. So this border cut straight into the heart of Maasai territory, and suddenly you have Kenyan Maasai and Tanzanian Maasai. You can imagine what kind of the, the crisis, of, crisis of identity that created uh, for the Maasai. Um, but it also created a crisis of identity for the rest of the, uh, the people within the, in Kenya. For example, the Kikuyu, who were you know they lived solely they live solely in um, in Kenya, but they identify first and foremost as Kikuyu, and still to, do to this day. Um, you know they they try to have this sense of national identity as Kenyans, but um, that's not um, that's not their primary identity. And which which is which is what when we when we talk about tribal conflicts, it's because they identify along their their ethnic, uh, eth they identify with their ethnic groups uh, first and foremost rather than as Kenyans. And so that creates uh, this lack of solidarity. Um, they also do introduce Christianity and the Christian education, um, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. You'll see the, the, a lot of um, 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 Africans who identify as, as, as Christians in, some, in one way or, uh, or another. Um, they introduced the European slave trade or the commercial slave trade, which was um, much more violent uh, than any uh, forms of slavery in the past, uh, particularly uh, African slavery or even Arabic slavery. And again, we'll get into that in depth later in the semester. They influenced the architecture of Africa. As you can see here, this is a colonial building, um, but this is the... Uh, uh, skyline for Nairobi and you can see it's very modern and um, influenced obviously by European architecture. You see the skyscrapers in, in the background. Um, they introduced um, modernization to this, you know, to this day. Here's a night co coffee house in Nairobi and they have internet service um, and, um, you know, um, wearing Western clothing, drinking Western, you know, uh, here it looks like a, a latte or some kind of uh, coffee drink. Um, and here are some Kikuyu men in Nairobi who are um, um, very much influenced by Western culture. You can see they're dressed in, in suit and tie, some of them, um, and, um, and wearing Western-influenced uh, clothing. Um, but the most important thing they introduced, as I've said earlier, was resource extraction. That's the primary, that, you know, when I, when that, those first couple of photos I showed you, King Leopold was interested in rubber. Um, and, um, you know, um, other countries were uh, interested, uh, England, for example, was interested in mine, uh, diamond, diamonds in South Africa or gold in Ghana. Um, and various countries like China for, to, to this day um, is very much interested in oil, but so are the British and uh, the Americans. Um, and so what they introduced was resource extraction, but it was primarily resource exploitation, particularly during the colonial era. Um, so Africans really weren't benefiting from um, their own resources. And even to this day, uh, there's an imbalance in that trade. Um, they are considered, as Dr. Ali Mazrui will say, tell you, the treasure chest, of, they have a treasure chest of diamonds. Um, they are, are the golden continent because they have the most diamonds and the most gold in the world. And yet, if that's the case, why do we perceive them as being as living in poverty? Um, 
which is the kind of dilemma that they face. I mean, they, they are rich in resources, but they don't necessarily benefit uh, as, as much as they could from that. Um, so we'll talk about uh, this later on in, in uh, other essays that you'll read uh, midway through the semester. Um, but I, I just wanted to give you this, this background information about the African continent, and I hope it's helpful uh, moving forward. Um, and again, I typically don't provide this kind of lecture in, in English class, but um, um, I think it was necessary for you to get a, a, just a basic understanding. So if you do have any questions about the European uh, influence on the continent, type those below, questions, comments, uh, anything you want clarified, and um, I will respond again as quickly as I can.